Welcome to another spirit filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well. I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted unto you, and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. To the song of all songs. Have you heard that song? The song of intimacy. I kept singing that song and I was just crying. I was saying, Holy Spirit, I respect and regard you more than anything at all. He's the number one lover of my life. And I kept singing that song. We have rejected his ministry, yet we want power. We have rejected his ministry, yet we want our prayers to work. We have rejected his ministry, yet we want prosperity. We want wisdom. Let me tell you, without the Holy Spirit, there can never be faith. Because the primary assignment of the Holy Spirit is to reveal Jesus. Are you getting my point? When you get born again, his primary assignment, it is the Holy Ghost that brings the reality of Jesus. It's not some mental ascent or some imagination or hallucination. The Holy Ghost was vested with the responsibility of bringing and revealing the reality of Jesus. And then, when he brings that reality to you, he empowers you and he uses you to reveal the reality of Jesus to the world. What we lack in the body of Christ is a true encounter with Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit that furnishes a reality in us that is greater than our experiences a reality that is greater than our pain a reality that is greater than our our ideologies is someone following what i'm saying this is the reason listen let me tell you there is a law that works in this earth everybody moves in the direction of his greatest conviction are you getting my point everybody moves we take steps in the direction of our greatest conviction that means if i set fire in this place and i say everyone if you know you are born again and the life of christ is in you go and stand inside the fire everybody say wow the life of god so is at work in me but the moment you finish that conviction everybody will follow the path of his true conviction is that true I couldn't sleep yesterday because I got so many text messages by people. So many. So many people were saying, should I do it? Man of God, I got an instruction. My parents woke me by 1 o'clock, by 2 o'clock. They said I should bath. Is it bath with salt or something? Don't laugh. Some of you did it. You are now laughing because we didn't see you. Some of you just went quickly just carry salt and then you you try to spiritualize it by saying blood of jesus Shabbat. it's not true it is still you are following the part of your conviction hallelujah see let me tell you in the face of reality what you really believe is what you will act is that true in the face we can fake this thing in church and wear nice clothes and sit down and act all kinds of things but in the face of reality it is your true conviction that is revealed in the face of reality what you really believe what you really believe in the last two weeks in nigeria habalists have become millionaires because all kinds of people church people pastors all kinds of people now that we are aware that money cannot buy the cure for ebola many people are running is we can come to church and talk all kinds of nonsense many of us have remembered we now have traditional rulers in our village and many of many of the people who have not been relevant in nigeria are now coming they are saying say you have rejected us you are intelligent you went to school you will now need us and they are running back with all kinds of gifts People are traveling to the village and saying, come home, come home, there is a solution. Listen, listen, I want to tell you something. 
one of the things that I believe has corrupted our appreciation of the ministry of the Holy Spirit is what I call an exa exaggerated intellectualism that we have brought to Christianity. Please listen to me. There is too much emphasis on intellectualism. We have lost the glory. We have lost the supernatural in the church. See, a woman of God said something that touched me. She said, if this modern day church were the church standing at the Red Sea, the moment we were there, they would call elders first to go and negotiate with Egypt to say, oh yeah, hold on. Let's, we are envoys. We were sent by the church. While we bring preachers to start raising money to build a bridge. That's what we would have done. The modern day church will never imagine that that sea will part and will say, oh Lord, we'll put prayer warriors to pray. We'll put kingdom financiers. We'll put intelligent architects and engineers. Let the building of the bridge begin. And God will watch and say, what is this? We have lost the reality. Listen to me. I believe in education. Don't get me wrong. I believe in mental development. We talk a lot about capacity building. But we have lost the authenticity. The simplicity of the presence of God. The glory of God. The supernatural power of God has been lost in the church. To an extent that anything we see that is above our intellect, we criticize and we doubt it. Yet, some of the people that do this are pastors. We want to find intellectual explanations for everything. We have lost the reality of the supernatural in the church. And it must be preserved. Because the supernatural in the church right now is an endangered species. There must be men and women who will protect it. Everything is analyzed in the church from an intellectual point of view. We have gone to school. We have degrees. And when a man comes on stage to speak, he says, I'm a professor. I read pneumatology. I read this. Please don't get me wrong. I honor education. I honor great men. I honor intellectuals. I'm talking about an exaggeration. Bringing it out of its boundary. I read advanced theology. I spent 32 years studying this and that. Everybody says, wow, this guy's an intellectual. Believing that he can solve the problem. And everybody takes it viral. And when... An ordinary brother just comes out from the wilderness. Who say, just go, what do you have to say? Brothers and sisters, listen to me. What is happening in the world right now is a demonstration of how little intellect can contribute to the well-being of people in the face of spiritual forces. Demons did not go to school, but they can torment a professor. Are you getting what I'm saying? There's too much emphasis on our intellect. And if it is not intellectualism, we don't receive it. Show me how A and B will become C. There's so much intellectualism. We come on stage and we present speeches to people. And they say, wow, that was such a nice speech. And the sick go back sick. The blind go back blind. The oppressed go back oppressed. Because we have lost the reality of the glory. He said, woe unto you, teachers and doctors of the law. You will not enter the kingdom and you will stop those who want to enter. Every time God wanted to do great things, he found ordinary men who would not resist the ministry of the Holy Spirit. We have ignored his ministry. We have ignored his ability to reveal the reality of Jesus there are many people if jesus were to walk physically today we will pass him and not know he's the one because the the activity of the spirit is not even in, at work in us if jesus came to many of our assemblies today we will drive him out is someone getting what i'm saying i'm trying to let us know that there are idols that we have lifted and one of it is not just witchcraft it is the overemphasis on intellectualism Bible says they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. But you try to lay hands on many people and they look and say, what is all that? Please, wisdom is profitable to direct. So we like scriptures that are close to our intellect so that we can explain it. 
But let me tell you, there is a supernatural generation that is arising. Ebola has proven to the world that it takes more than intellect to reign. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Right now, the whole world is, is standing still. We are depending on doctors and microbiologists. And you can imagine the pressure that is on our doctors and professors and microbiologists. They are sleeping and waking up in the lab. They are under all kinds of pressures. Hmm. It is at that point of darkness that the church can arise. Mandela Kaporos. Are you getting blessed? Ebola has proven that the Christianity in Africa and Nigeria is very weak. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We must admit it from we the men of God. Let's tell ourselves the truth. It is a disease that money cannot buy the solution. If it could buy it, there are people who have the drugs and then will claim who claim that it's because we are men of God. But right now, it is your individual faith that can stand and protect you. At that point, the robber hits the road. You carry your degree and place it upon Ebola and say, in the name of Jesus, leave Nigeria. You carry your, your money, withdraw, carry your ATM card and place it and say, all the demons. Look at how fear is killing people. One announcement spread like wildfire bath with salt and water every nobody even found out whether it was jesus that said it whether it was the devil we will find out on sunday meanwhile let me hurry up and do it it tells you that all this courage who have been bouncing in church in our hearts there's fear they said bath we laugh at the man for bathing seven times is that true now it's beginning to make sense there are many preachers that did it but on Sunday, we'll now stand and say, you will bath me. Many people took their bath. Trust me. Don't feel bad. Don't feel bad. Don't feel bad. No, 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 no. It's not condemnation. It's, this is just a discussion. We're saying that there is a reality. Brothers and sisters, I want you to imagine for one minute that if the government of Lagos State did not manage what happened and it spread like wildfire and came to the north what we that's when all our talk talk it would have it would have been put that's the mount camel experience everybody would now stand and we will be tried by fire to know men who are of the secret and men who are outside but let me tell you I do not tell you that many of these kinds of things will not come. Getting afraid is a waste of time. Rise up in the spirit and you will get to a point. Listen, this was the same kind of disease that happened in the days of a man called John Lake. Come on now. Generals indeed. These were men that truly you could say men. They didn't make so much noise. But they were men with evidences. John Lake went to help the doctors when the foam in their mouth you know when many people heard the story they thought it was exaggeration now you know it's true that even if the foam touches your hand it can, you can contact it and while the doctors were doing their best John Lake went and was helping to bring out the dead people with his bare hands and after weeks nothing happened to him and the doctor said what is the secret and he said great is the mystery of godliness God can dwell in a man and this guy proved this scientifically he said let's go to the lab put the foam of the dead man on my hands and they took it he said check it let me show you that I represent a true God and he brought a harvest Spokane was the healthiest city in the whole world see to be a healing technician in John Jake's healing school you would need to heal seven people that's your admission letter seven people proven healing to be considered as one of the healing technicians what are we bragging for but can i tell you the bible says shall their own belief make the faith of god of none effect we can sit down as if god is powerless we can sing all kinds of songs i will never worship man make god you are above him 
keep singing. I will never worship man made God. Blah 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 blah. If we don't stop this, this hypocrisy and settle down for authentic apostolic Christianity, we will be in for a shock in this country. So in the north, there's Boko Haram, in the south, there's Ebola. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. This is what God is telling Nigeria. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Yeah. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Listen, brothers and sisters. There is a supernatural dimension to life. Life is not just physical. Life is not just intellectual. The Holy Ghost seeks to reveal a reality to us. When God called me, I told God I don't want to be fake. I want to stand in for truth. And I made up my mind that I would pay any price to make sure that I do not handle the word of Christ deceitfully. That when I tell people Jesus can heal, I will prove it. If I tell people Jesus can bless, I will prove it. If I tell people Jesus can save, we will not gather people for miracle service and come and be lying and faking miracles. So, oh God, if the anointing is not on me, let's cancel it. This is how I pray. I have no business trying to build ministry, trying to build a repetition. Can we give the body of Christ? Can we give Nigeria? Can we give Africa something tangible that will enter history? Can the governments of nations call on the church and say Ebola is killing us? Where are the healing evangelists? The fact, look, let me tell you, in the days of God's generals, listen to me, Alexander Dowe was called the spiritual mayor of his city. The government consulted with him. If it were in the days of the apostles, by now, the government will be having a meeting with the men of God to say something is wrong. We hold crusades and pack it full and no man can come out and say, where is the God of Elijah? Brothers and sisters, I'm not saying this as one who has attained. This is a cry for all of us to cry. I'm saying that let's stop boasting. There is still a lot to be done. Thank God for what we have done. Thank God for the wheelchairs. But let, where is that audacious voice that will not stand not thank God for ah, I wish men like Benson Idahosa were still alive these were the men Archbishop Benson Idahosa if this man was still alive he would have gone on NTA and said according to the word of the Lord that's a true prophet not just names and phone numbers standing and saying I declare that this spirit that came from the sea called Ebola pass over Africa and he will go back and sleep a man that went around the world 52 times white men trembled at his presence because he took time to know God for real is the hand of the Lord too short that he cannot save is it that there are no voices many of us claim that we saw Jesus every day there are men of God that say every Sunday I'm now seeing Jesus. We have not seen the effect. Men who saw Jesus in the Bible, even those who were close to them fell. And it took them a long while. I keep saying this thing and please don't get me wrong. I'm not criticizing the body of Christ. I'm part of it. I'm challenging the body of Christ. That we must stop lying to ourselves in the name of Christ. And rise up there is so much more. Because Ebola is not a virus. Ebola is a spirit from the sea and it arises with rage. They are called rulers of darkness. 
they rain every time there is ignorance but there must be men of the secret place every time there is a manifestation of evil God will send a man he has been training when Jezebel that witch oppressed the prophets of God the Bible says and Elijah the Tishbite where are the Elijahs we are building churches building cathedrals thank God for helping the poor I believe in charity but it will not save the world we need the demonstration of the reality a reality that is greater than medicine a reality that is greater than politics and brothers and sisters if God is calling you into ministry don't be in a hurry to start printing banners if you have printed it fold it and keep it in your room because there is a lot of work to be done Jesus power koinonia cathedral we we implicate ourselves with dangerous names and people come hungry and we come and waste their time with everything with everything we will With everything, with everything, we will shout for your praise. Can we pray and know that our prayer can have a national impact? Can we speak and know that there is a force that backs our word that no government can resist? Can we bring the power of God to bear? A few of the victims that have contacted Ebola now are humanly speaking going to die. Yet there are many people who talk life-giving spirits in Nigeria and nobody can even send a handkerchief because the truth is this is a miracle that the reputation of any man of God that dares to try is at national stake. Behold, darkness shall cover the earth. Isaiah saw these days and he said it. Behold, darkness will cover the earth. Things will challenge our convictions. Things will challenge our faith. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. Hear me. We must become men and women of the secret place everybody say the secret place we must embrace the ministry of the holy spirit come hold my hands the bible says and the lord listen look at me and the lord walking with them walking with them confirming their words with signs following and the lord walking with them and the Lord healing through them and the Lord delivering through them he said yea do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death we have not entered there yet he said I shall fear no evil is that true is that true but are we not afraid of evil as darkness looms over the face of Africa governments have been having meetings for weeks because right now it's not an issue of money the God of money, the God of gold has been brought to its knees. And right now the world is crying. Can the church arise? Can the church speak? Dishonor to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has been crying across the face of Nigeria and we have ignored him because we want to build branches. We have ignored him because we want to wear suits. We, we have ignored him because we want crowd. We have ignored him because we are contented with the little miracles and all the things. Hear me! Any man that disregards the ministry of the Holy Spirit is about to pay for it in the days that we are coming. This is not an option again. Ebola is only a shaking. He said, and I will shake the heavens and I will shake the earth. I'm not saying it is God that has brought it, but I'm telling you that there are seasons. There are many spirits like Ebola. These are devils from the sea. These are devils of the air. The Bible calls them the rulers of darkness. 
and if the church does not present something real to the world can i tell you what will happen our churches will be full on sundays and every other herbal shrine will be filled during the week are you hearing what i'm saying when the going gets tough i guarantee you men will return to traditional christianity this one that you see people say fake man of god everybody will soon become fake if we don't take time because when things when people start dying i hope you know people don't want to die when people start dying i guarantee you they will start running to herbalists and it will not be hidden it will not be hidden and they will wait to slap the person who says why are you going to a herbalist so the church must arise i thought through these things it is faith brothers and sisters that move mountains never forget this we need an introduction of bible faith our fathers caught something that was real unfortunately for many of us now in this church that we have now the church of christ in africa as a continent and for the most part in nigeria our proof of faith is that money is in our account that's largely our proof of faith so if i have a big church if i have a glass house if i have a flashy jeep i say faith brought it if that faith brought it that faith should raise the dead that faith should heal the sick with everything with everything we will shout for your glory with everything with everything we will shout let me tell you something there is an army that is rising please believe me i have been saying this thing for a long time there are men and women who are saying no to the things people have said yes to for a long time and they are staying they are paying the price and the bible says call on to me and i will answer he said i will show you i will show you if you call on to me and you mean business not call on to me to use me not call on to me to use me to build a church not call on to me to use me and get a wife and get a husband and get money thank god for these things not call on to me to use me and get anointing he said if you seek me with all your heart you will find me and when you find me in that secret place he said i will show you i will show you more than good talk i will show you more than rema i will show you the secrets of the spirit and on the strength of that encounter true faith will come listen they call in lystra they called paul and who now was it barnabas they called them zeus and hermes these were greek gods zeus and hermes this zeus was the god of the atmosphere they studied these gods they have their history hallelujah all of the gods zeus hermes apollos all of these gods they were gods of the air the greeks held these gods in high esteem and when men who had stayed in the secret place who were not looking for ministry or title or apostle or prophet they were men who hungered for the things of god the bible says when they showed up the men said the gods have come down to us they began to worship them they said paul was hermes because he was the god of communication he spoke he was the, the god of of intelligence they called men zeus and hermes i hope you know that greek philosophers were intelligent people they were not daft so for a man to look at a fellow man and said no this is not a man this is a god may our generation restore the order of true power may our generation prove to creation 
that Jesus truly died. May our generation prove. Oh God, I pray that you raise men who are genuine. Raise men that love your presence more than ministry. Raise men that love your presence more than power. Raise men who are not, they are not, they are not concerned about titles. Raise men who are not concerned about church expansion and having the greatest name and having the greatest chiefs. Thank God for these things. But raise men who are envoys indeed. It has nothing to do with your kind of church. Listen, there are many of you scattered in this crowd. I don't want to say it's everybody, but there are many of you. This cry is already like a burden in your spirit. Because we are like a woman that is with child and traveling. When she gets to the eighth month, getting to the ninth month, lots of unusual things begin to happen. There are women here. There are ladies seated here who will walk in the anointings of Deborah. You are seated ordinarily. But you see, people don't believe it. They don't believe it because you don't look like it. But you know that your hunger for God is not natural. There is something. When others sleep, you wake up in the night on your bed and you can't sleep again. You don't even, it's a cry of destiny. God is searching. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, the spirit of God is hovering across Africa again and saying, will you reject me? Will you not embrace me? I strengthen John G. Lake. I strengthen Smith Wigglesworth. Catherine Kuhlman talks so much about him. We talk so much about, about Catherine Kuhlman. But we do not talk about the person that she talked so much about. Ketin Kuman cried and said, I'd rather spend five minutes. I would not spend five minutes without the Holy Ghost. This is my passion. I have a hunger. I don't know where it came from. I don't know where it's taking me to. This is the hunger that drives me. I have no ambition for ministry. This is what drives me. Thank God for all of the blessings you meet on the way. But there is a hunger. I have seen in the visions of the Lord that a time will come. I've seen this many times where like the shadows of Peter, men will walk like gods in this country. Men will walk. Let me tell you, the face of what you see as Christianity in Nigeria is changing. Yes, it's changing. There is an Elijah generation that is arising. But the problem is, the level of attention we are giving God now will not equip us for the kind of grace and prophetic destiny that we have. There is so much distraction. We give God little time. We give the Spirit of God little time. Yet we want so much. Make me powerful. Make me great make me this and that I desire you every time I'm alone I say spirit of God if I never become anything in this life show me the glory of God reveal the reality of Jesus Christ to me I've been praying I've been fasting and I've been telling the Lord I want a visitation again from Jesus Christ thank God for the one I had but I need a fresh visitation. There are questions I could not ask. I want to ask them now. There are questions many people are running away from. I am tired of preachers preaching powerful messages without the grace to back up what they are saying. The Bible says great grace was upon them. Not just grace in terms of talking it. A demonstration of the spirit. The apostle will be preaching and someone will fall and die. And you tell the people no cause for alarm. He will go out and raise the person and not put it on newspaper. When will that happen, brothers and sisters? Is there such a time that this will happen in the body of Christ? That a man can walk to people and these are all people in the wheelchairs and he says, I bring you the authority of a government. He's not asking questions. He's not trying to claim. He's not saying, do you have faith or not? No. The authority and he tells them this is a sign that Christ is alive. 
this is more than all the series of messages we keep teaching that people believe and there is no faith is someone hearing what i'm saying we pray for hours thank god for the prayers but our prayers are not backed up with grace our prayers are not backed up by authentic faith let me tell you the truth if we have the faith to release on the kind of prayers we are praying we will change the face of this nation hallelujah god is calling us there is a cry of the spirit some of you started with god you started very well but little glory has distracted you and you have left this pursuit please sit down guys some of us started some of you are here inside and outside you started on a good note you had this hunger now you don't know what has happened boyfriend has come to carry the hunger girlfriend has come to carry the hunger you finally graduated and the hunger has gone there are people in this place God is speaking to you and is telling you you are still part of the army you are still part of the army I am counting on you it may take a while there are some of you who have not even made up your mind for Jesus Christ but you are part of this army and God is calling you there is an urgency in the spirit and don't you say it does not concern you this has nothing to do with men of God this is salvaging the soul of Africa salvaging the soul of Nigeria before Christ comes Africa and indeed Nigeria will present to the world the true portrait of apostolic Christianity not just talk if we do not contend we are going to see more dead people in the next few years sicknesses will kill them because hell is boiling like a volcano and releasing the best of his arsenals and let me tell you something like the prophets under the custody of Obadiah we must stay we must stay we must pay the price many of us have all sorts of ambitions many of us have all sorts of things but there is one desire there is one ambition I live only to see his kingdom come that's my ambition that's my ambition that's my desire I foresee a time when the church will walk in levels of glory when the church will walk in the prophecy of Smith Wigglesworth before he died he called and Murray Lester Sumro sorry and he began to prophesy to him he talked about our generation and he said he saw the church rising in glory rising in power brothers and sisters if we do not get into this dimension our children are at stake of dying from viruses that doctors cannot cure are you hearing what i'm saying if we do not rise a time will come our children will go to school and they will not come back again because a demonic spirit has eaten them up but may god raise generals in the spirit men who can stand and say satan before you pass through my family come through me and the bible says that you will take up poison and it will not hurt you we are going to pray tonight we are really going to take our time to pray we are going to cry for an encounter listen we need genuine encounters it is only an encounter that will tell us which message is a lie and which message is true every message sounds nice but an encounter will bring the separation there are many sick bodies that are waiting for our encounter there are many lives and destinies i spoke with my parents this afternoon and i told them relax you are totally covered covered from ebola covered from everything because there is an envoy who is still interested in the things of god many of you want your parents to die like chickens because you know they are not born again and in some of us in our families you are the only ones who are serious with god and rather than rising the devil wants to destroy your family so he's causing your fire to go cold so that when he comes there is no man that can stand he said they are taken for a prey and none said restore they are taken for a prey 
and there is nobody who can stand. I'm ready to stand for my generation. It does not matter what it will cost me. I will preach, I will pray, I will teach, I will travel around and bring the reality of the glory of God. I may be criticized, the message may not be appealing, but I tell you the truth, this is what I was born for. And I will do this with all my life. I don't have multiple ambitions. There is one reason, one reason and one only. You must have a conviction that you can live and die for. Otherwise, you are wasting your time in here. Stop escorting men in destiny. God is calling someone tonight and is telling you, start asking these questions and start taking the things of God seriously. Jeremiah 33 verse 3, please. Oh, 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 and I will answer thee. I will show you what? There are great and mighty things that we have not known. And we must say, Lord, show me. Show me. Thank God for the fathers. Thank God for what they have helped us see. But the times that we live in now require a higher conviction. Let me tell you. Moses did not do the great things he did because he was a man of faith. Moses did what he did because he had a real encounter. There was a real voice. You cannot doubt that voice. Every time I stand before sick people and I look at their situation, this is how God comforts me. At once, I receive the flash of the vision of my encounter with Jesus Christ or any of the encounters I've had all of a sudden faith arises this faith thing that we are doing is, is is theology let me tell you the truth i know that i'll be criticized for what i've said again no problem but if it is true faith brothers and sisters it will really move mountains our mountains have not moved it means we are preaching something else can we watch that video that are you ready with it just a song that dance with me song and then we'll pray hallelujah it was it was so much in me i couldn't stop i just kept singing that song because i want many of us to fall in love with the spirit of god tonight i don't know how i can make you do this but i cried to god and i said god help me ready help us holy spirit Are we ready? I want you tonight to fall in love with the spirit afresh. I really, really want us to encounter the spirit of God in a fresh dimension. A lot will happen in this place. God, within the next few minutes, find a generation that cry for you. And Lord, I ask in the name of Jesus, let our cry be genuine. Spirit of God, we permit your operation in this place. Just find men for the next 15 minutes. Let there be an awakening. Find men and women inside, outside. In the name of Jesus, tonight, I'd like you to drop anything that is not of God. Take God seriously, even if it is for the first time. Shabana na Book 
We cry, we cry for your glory. Let it come with greater intensity. Let it come with fire. Let it come with fire. We're tired of religion. We're tired of church. We're tired of pretense. We owe our generation a debt that we must pay. To the sound of our song. From the desire to build ministry, we repent for giving the Spirit of God little place. We have exalted fame, we have exalted money, we have exalted education. But we want your anointing, we want your power, we want your glory, we want to give our generation something. Pray. Tell the Holy Ghost, find the habitation in my life. Find a place. Find a place. Find a place in my ministry. Find a place in my life. Find a place in my home. Hey. Koinonia, pray. The Holy Ghost is finding entrance into our lives. Wherever you are, inside or outside. Go ahead, Spirit of the Living God, find men. Capture lovers in this place. Capture men. We call unto you. We call unto you. Answer us. We call unto you. We call unto you. Rapa teke te te pagata la ba 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 Zombro to koporo do ba la da ba Take my ambition, 
Take my heart. Take my life. Take everything. that cry Lord we cry to know you we cry man of God there is more pastors there is more apostles there is more Use us, O oh God. Use us, O oh God. We dedicate our lives. We dedicate our all. Shapaka parada balaba, shata balaba. We lay down our pride. We lay down the walls. Hallelujah. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, give me an encounter. Not just this night. Give me an encounter that will produce real faith in my life. I am tired of faking it. It's not supposed to be so hard. It's because there is no encounter. It's not supposed to be so hard to heal the sick. It's not so hard to live in hell. It's because there is no encounter. There's much prayer. But little faith that backs up the prayer. Much fasting. But little faith that backs the fasting. Much confession. But little faith that backs the confession. Hallelujah. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Use all of me, all of me, Lord. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. Use all of me, all of me. Yeah. Take all of me, all of me. Yeah. Use all of me. Use all of me. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Use all of me, all of me, Lord. Please take. 
as many of you who can lift up your hands. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands. Spirit of the Sovereign Lord, our hands are lifted because we mean business with you. And I pray right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. I pray like a man who finds the lover of his soul. Capture as many people even in this place. Make mighty men and women right now in the name of Jesus. Right now in the name of Jesus. I stretch my hands inside and outside. Right now in the name of Jesus. Right now in the name of Jesus. Right now in the name of Jesus. Capture men. Capture men. Take them to a realm of intimacy beyond that which they have seen. I release the ministry of the Holy Ghost inside and outside. I release the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Take men to realms of visions. Take men to realms of dreams. I stir up prophetic fountains. Take men to deep realms. The spirit of man is like a deep water. Lord, I pray. Let the hidden things of the spirit. Let the hidden mysteries of the spirit. Let eyes be open. Let ears be open. May men hear the sounds of heaven. May men hear the sounds of angels. May men hear the sounds. I open you up to third heaven encounters. Many of you will begin to have visions. Visions of angels. Visions of Jesus. Third heaven encounters that will produce faith. Visions of heaven. Visions of angels. Encounters of the Spirit mantles of fire you will become messengers of fire messengers of power 
messengers of grace, great grace, grace, great grace, grace, great grace. secret place where I will be with you you can make me lie down wrap me in your arms wrap me in your arms wrap me in your arms Shibala parada balaraba Wrap me in your arms. Wrap me in your arms. Wrap me in your arms. Would you take me to that place, Lord? To that secret place where I will be with you. You can make me. that I seek you are my all in all seeking you as a precious jewel not to keep I'll be a fool you are my all in all just the voices just the voices. Jesus, Lamb, worthy is your name. Worthy is your name. Come on, call his name. This is the one who will empower the church experientially. Worthy, worthy is your I come against every sickness. I come against every infirmity. I come against demons. I come against powers. I come against thrones. Every spirit in this place that is not of Christ, I command you to leave now. I command you to leave now. Every sickness in this place, everyone who is sick, the hand of God comes upon you right now. I cause every infirmity. I cause every pain. I cause every disease. And every destiny that has been tied up I release you right now. I release you right now. I release every destiny that has been tied up. I prophesy the opening of the gates to every destiny that has been closed. I prophesy the opening of the gates to every ministry, every business, every life, every career, every destiny. I prophesy the opening of the gates. Hallelujah. In the next 10 minutes, I like us to pray. Hallelujah. James, please, we are going to pray for Nigeria and we are going to cast this devil far from our lives, far from our families. James. 
Shila Procasira Bondo Protoshima. James 5 from verse 17. James 5 from verse 17. Please, when it's time to pray, I'd like us to pray. The church is a powerful force. James 5. Can it be projected? Verse 17. Okay, let's just read it. James 5. Don't worry. Verse 17. Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly that there might not be rain. And it rained not in the earth, not in his country, not in his city, in the whole earth. By a space of three years and six months. And then verse 18. And he prayed again. And the heavens gave rain. And the earth brought forth her fruit. We are going to pray. And we are going to challenge two forces that plague our nations. Number one is the force of terrorism. Number two is this pestilence. Ebola and the rest. Are you ready to pray? The Bible says the fervent and effectual prayer of the righteous man. The fervent, heartfelt. Hallelujah. If you can hold your hands together, wonderful. We are going to pray. Lift up your voice and say after me in the name of Jesus. Shout it, say in the name of Jesus. We come against every virus every spirit every demon that wants to plague our families that wants to plague nigeria that wants to plague africa we command you to get out of this continent out of this nation and out of our families we command your powers broken by the blood of Jesus. Come on, lift your voice and pray. We cause Ebola virus. We cause every other virus. We cause every virus. We cause it from Liberia. We cause it from Nigeria. We cause it from the city of Lagos. Across the 36 states. We break the power of evil. We break the power of evil. We break the power. Shoke You are a spirit from the sea. We call you by day and we challenge you in the name of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus, the blood of the eternal covenant, we come with the rod of the higher priesthood and we challenge you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we challenge you. We challenge you. We challenge the shrine. We challenge the covenant that empower your operations. We challenge the enchantment that invoked you out of the sea. We challenge the powers that strengthen your operation. We challenge every spell. We challenge every voice. We challenge every incantation that permits your operation across Africa, across Nigeria, across the states of this nation. We come with the rod of a higher priesthood. We come with the blood of Jesus. And we command you, we banish you, we banish you out of this nation, we banish you out of Africa, we banish you 
in the name of Jesus, we punish you. Come on, pray. Pray. When the church prays, we authorize heaven to invade our territory. We are ambassadors and we are responsible ambassadors. No way to a border. We curse you from the heavens. We curse you. The Lord rebuked you. We curse you by the power of the heavens. We curse you above the powers that release you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No spirit arises on its own. It is invoked by incantations. The Bible says that woman that invoked the spirit of Samuel, it was a demon that appeared like the spirit of Samuel. Spirits do not just arise and enter territories. They are invoked by spells and incantations we are going to pray one more time we challenge the powers that sponsor the release whatever prophetic code brought Ebola out of the sea we cause you back with the rod of the higher prison we cause those powers we cause those spells we cause this Every force of divination, every force of necromancy, stargazing, men who have connived with the heavens and release the spirit, we call the power from the second heaven. We call them, we call them, we call them from the astral realm. We call them by the power of the Holy Ghost. The blood of Jesus, stronger, greater, stronger, greater, stronger, greater than every force, greater than every sacrifice that permitted the Hallelujah. 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 Are you ready to challenge the power of terrorism in our nation? Listen, let me tell you, no human being on his own can have the audacity to terrorize a people. There are spirits. We are not interested in the human beings, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Hallelujah. Are you ready to pray? It takes sacrifices to invoke these spirits. We are going to pray. Our weapon of victory is the blood of Jesus. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We are not praying stupid prayers. We are praying prayers that produce results. The blood of Jesus paid a higher price than any enchantment that activates the operation of terrorists. And we are going to pray. We are starting from our Jerusalem. We are saying no way to Zaria. No way, no crisis, no fight, no way, and we spread it across the nation. Lift your voice and pray. We cripple the hands of terrorism. We cripple the hands of bloodshed. We cripple the hands of wickedness. We break the bands of evil. We break the bands of evil. We challenge powers. We challenge thrones. We set altars on fire. We plead the blood, we plead the blood across Zambia, our Jerusalem. We plead the blood, we plead the blood. Jerusalem, we pray for your peace. We pray for your peace. We pray for the peace of Zambia. Our borders are secure. Our debts are protected. Pray for the nation. Pray for the nation. Pray for the nation. We pray for every land where they have been bloodshed. We pray for the church of Christ in every land where they have been bloodshed. Oh God, Allah. Oh God. 
and we are done. We are going to cause the spirit of fear. The Bible says and to deliver them who through the fear of death, not death itself, the fear. Our families are afraid. Many people are running around. Ebola has even become more scary than terrorism. But we are going to pray. Listen, let me tell you something. Fear is to Satan what faith is to God. Every time the devil wants to strike, he releases the spirit of fear. When men fear and their hearts fail them, then evil will happen on him. Then. That's why he told Joshua, he said, be strong. When you stand before them, don't chicken out. There is a government that backs you. He said, be strong. Be strong and courageous. Be strong. Be strong. Be strong. Be strong. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to cause the spirit of fear across our media. Right? Because that's where we get all kinds of things. We are going to pray and secure our media, our newspapers, the social network, and everywhere we are going to pray and say, Lord, we banish fear. No, no channel in this nation will be a means of carrying fear to terrorize people, lift your voice and pray. We cause fear. We cause fear. Across the airwaves. We cause fear. That spirit of fear. We banish. We cause fear. Fear in our homes. Fear in our places of work. Fear in schools. Fear at the airport. We cause fear. The church refuses to fear. We refuse to fear. We cause fear. We cause fear. We cause fear. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and of the Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, Thou shalt not be afraid of the arrows that fly, nor the noisome pestilence. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. You're going to say, As for me and my family, every virus is far from us listen take seriously this prayer point you're going to pray and say the blood of jesus by the mystery of the blood by the mystery of the blood i plead the blood upon myself and across the borders of my loved ones open your mouth and pray I plead the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus. The seal of the blood is upon me. 
the seal of the sacrifice. What the Lord has paid, I have been bought with the price. I will not be destroyed by sickness. My Lord, for the secure. In the name of Jesus, we bleed the blood. 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 We Hallelujah. Lift your hands and say after me in the name of Jesus. I have the life of God in me. Therefore, no sickness, no virus. No demonic manifestation can find expression in my body. And by the ministry of intercession, I cover for my loved ones. I cover for my family. And I declare that the blood of Jesus stands as a standard, stands as a wall against every virus against every plague against every pestilence therefore i refuse to fear i am strong i am courageous i refuse to fear i refuse to fear the faith of the son of god is at work in me the seal of god's ultimate sacrifice is upon me i, I was bought with a price I wouldn't die cheaply. I was bought with a price. I wouldn't die cheaply. Come on, give Jesus a shout. Give him a shout. Give him a shout. Hallelujah. 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 Let me encourage everyone. Hallelujah. When you get home today or tomorrow, just prepare the communion as a symbol of the body and the bread of Christ. Hallelujah. Prepare it as a communion and declare that this is the ultimate cure for everything. Everything. You know how they give vaccination? That they give you vaccine and you take that communion and tell yourself, I will go anywhere I need to go. I will greet everybody I will shake hands and hug generously. I will play my part and no devil. No devil. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for the spirit of faith. We thank you because your word won. We give you all the praise. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let's take the following announcements and then we'll be out of here. Please be seated. God bless you. Those of us who are coming here for the first time, if this is your first time worshiping with us, please, wherever you are, I'd like you to honorably find, find your way to the front. We love you. We want to bless you. We want to speak over your life. Celebrate them, Koinonia. God brought them, wherever you are, inside or outside, those coming for post-UME, and then you're coming, our parents. Bless them, Koinonia. Come on, celebrate them. Celebrate the hand of God in our midst. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, we'll be very quick about this. Thank you so much. Please keep coming, no matter how far. God bless you. Thank you so much for coming. God brought you by his spirit. And I want to appreciate and celebrate all those who invited these people. Can you celebrate them, Koinonia? Hallelujah. May good things never stop coming into your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. For those of you coming for the first time, thank you so much for making our time to come. We love you and we mean it from the depth of our hearts. This is Koinonia. Hallelujah.
a meeting organized by Eternity Network International. We're here every Friday, building and basking in the spirit. Hallelujah. We have a prayer and a prophecy for you. And I assure you that when we speak over your life, you will return with results. Hallelujah. Stretch your hands, saints of God, and prophesy. Bless them. We bless you. We bless you in the name of Jesus. We bless you to prevail. We bless you to rise above limitations. Those of you who wrote post UME, we give you admission here and now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we don't care what politics happens in the Senate. We are the parliament of heaven. We instruct it, we command it, we enforce it, we decree and establish it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And for those of you who came here trusting God for one miracle or the other, we command that you will never go back the same. Whatever came here with you, you will leave it here and walk free in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you and strengthen your hand. May you love God again and again, more and more, in the name of Jesus Christ. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.